This is Pocket, episode 13, If the Lug Doesn't Fit, on Saturday, November 7th, 2015. And now, control the bird. This episode of Pocket is hosted by Brandon Johnson, Brian Mitchell, and Ryan Rampersad. This episode also has show notes at thenexus.tv slash pk13. Hello. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Yeah, it's been a while, but don't worry, we're still here. And not not only are we here, we're also on iTunes, thanks iTunes? to our good friend Ian. What? As, as we shared on the social media at least a week ago. <laughs> yep, we are officially, uh, we're on the directory. You can, you can find us. So hey to all of our new listeners who are new and found us from that particular corner of the interwebs. I Good mean, to have you. Look at that album art in iTunes. I mean, it looks perfect. <laughs> yeah, it does look pretty cool. Uh, podcast. Hope we don't scare you off. <laughs> yes, all of uh, all of, all of us in our what thirteen episodes. Yeah, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully you can stick around for our large time commitment here, <laughs> and our very varying uh, times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which reminds me, I should start the clock. So, uh, what have you guys been doing these days? I've been writing a lot of Python. For class oh really nice yeah. is is it uh, python around any particular topic or is it just it's for uh, my artificial intelligence class so oh really um, we are having to uh well, there's a server set up by our teacher and then we are making an ai to i guess go around the server so it's like a, a map of copenhagen uh-huh. with those places and a couple of games you can play on each so either a navigation where there are obstacles you have to go to spaces that have greater or lower weights. And so you have to find some search algorithm that'll go through there. Um, and there's also paper soccer, if you're familiar with that game. Okay, yeah. Which is a little tricky game, but it's, it's fun. So just a lot of Python. Nice. Yeah. Python's good. Python yeah. is and we're using good. version 3.5. Oh, so yeah. it's just get rid oh, of wow. everything old. <laughs> Doing it right. Move fast and break things. Exactly. Something. Well, I think, I mean, the only stuff we're using is requests. Yeah. And maybe like random and time and something else. So it's not like we're depending on very much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that sounds really cool. Yeah, I'm I'm liking Python. Good to, good to be back after not working on weather, but <laughs> yeah. it happens. So how is, how is the AI class in general? Yeah. Um, it's... I don't mind it. It's a mix of theory and some programming. Mm-hmm. So a mix of the two. I think the the requirements for the class weren't very clear. Some people have very little programming background in the class. Some have more. Mm-hmm. Um, I definitely feel on the upper edge, probably because I'm a senior this year. and Most people sitting right here are juniors. But um it's an okay class. I, it's hard to to know what a class is going to be like studying abroad because everything is you can't base it to what you know at your school really. Mm-hmm. So right, yeah. But yeah. it apparently is going to count for the theory elective for the computer science major at Morris. So good, nice. I will be taking robotics this spring. Very nice. Oh, I awesome! My, my earliest class will be at three twenty p.m. <laughs> well, that means your latest. When is your latest class then? Um, 3.30 p.m. Wow, <laughs> that's perfect. So I'll have robotics three days a week and my senior seminar once a week for half an hour. So. Yep. Nice. Well, that's pretty, pretty cool. cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, once, um, once I register in two weeks and hope everything goes okay. Well, but. that's that. Yeah, it's always a fun thing to do. Do, uh, do you know if you have to use the new PeopleSoft version of class registration? Yep, we do. Yeah, you just go have fun and suffer then. Yeah, I don't know if we had to last semester or not because I'm I was studying abroad, so I just didn't register. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah um, for but us, they told us like if you don't register, PeopleSoft will be gone, or no, PeopleSoft is coming, so old registration will be gone for like four weeks. Go now, hurry. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There, there's some cool things out there that are that are trying to make it a little bit easier though. There, I think a computer science professor wrote a new class search engine. Um, that basically looks almost exactly like the old one. And then you can just 
do what I do and um, enter in these, you know, whatever eight digit. Yeah, uh, of course. The class, class number. Yep. Yeah. 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 I remember when Schedulizer was a thing. Yeah. Yeah. That was a long time ago. Yep. Oh, yeah. And there's a new uh, there's a new version of Schedule Builder, too. They use. Um, I, 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 I love that thing. It's pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I should probably look more because I searched once for classes and then I haven't been back and I should probably just get numbers so I can paste and go. I remember um, one of my friends who was working on that Android app with me, they were also taking uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and yeah. that was one of the um, W classes at the U, one of those intensive writing classes. Yeah. And it was one of the harder intensive writing classes. There was programming, writing, and it was theory, but it was also programming, and it was awful. Oh, my gosh. Yikes. But on the other hand, um, they, they, they of course, told everybody, like, oh, well, everybody wants to know about machine learning now. So if you take this class and you can tell everybody you know it and, and blah, 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 you'll get tired for $100,000, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. One, one class. Yep. Uh, yeah, got gotta love statements like that. Yeah, I <laughs> I enjoyed it immensely. <laughs> so, what have you guys been working on? Uh, I've been um working on. I have no idea. Whatever I've been working on, uh, I'm working on a secret project. I can't tell anyone about. There's there's that. That's what been all of this week. Um, oh, nice. Secrets. Prior to that, I was working on some Vue.js stuff. Uh, Vue.js yeah. 1.0 is out. Um, and it's, it's pretty, pretty much been stable since the RCs and betas started coming out, but you know, minor bug fixes here and there. Um, the, the, what's interesting about it, I think is since it came out a week and a half ago, the Mm 1.0, there's been seven bug build fixes and that's really cool. Like, you know, the the bugs are getting squashed and we're getting new builds every few days. It's great. That's awesome. Yeah, that's good. And I really like that. So big fan of that uh, i i built the quiz game tv show thing in view js so that was pretty cool too yeah nice so we had a halloween party here a few days ago uh, during uh-huh. halloween and um uh, it turns out Vue.js js is pretty good for that kind of thing you know your, your data goes in and it's displayed and then the data goes out and new data comes in <laughs> that's awesome yeah so i i enjoyed that so I have a uh, hypothetical programming question for you. So yeah. let's say you had a set of 50 things and those things happen to be questions and corresponding answers to be displayed on the screen. Yeah. Well, if you randomly pick a question from a set of 50 things, how often are you going to get a repeat? Uh, let's see. I guess it depends on how random your your uh, random selection is. but well, Yeah. Well, it turns out it's annoying, and you see randomly re- picked things repeat quite frequently. Like, it could be oh, every gosh. other question. It could be double questions. It happens <laughs> too often with whatever the built-in ma- uh, math.random thing is in JavaScript. So what I ended up doing is um, finding my own uh, Fishery 8's shuffle method and randomizing nice. the whole array, <laughs> going through it once, and then randomizing it again. So no doubles could happen ever. Okay. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. So, That's intense. Yeah, that, 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 you know, it was easy to do, but it's like, you know, I can't handle it anymore. We're making it so really it was random. More random than random. Well, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it was probably random to get those repeats and, and stuff, but I didn't like it. It wasn't a fun game then. Yeah, yeah. 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 Cool. So, also in the past couple of weeks, um, Babel 6 came out. So, have you have either of you worked with the ES6 at all? A little bit, yeah. I need to, but no, not not really. Yeah, when I was writing my new quiz show thing, I you know did it in Babel, and I I've gotten used to using the little arrow function, and it's amazing. Oh, nice. Yeah. So if you don't know what the arrow function is, it's basically a shortcut to write an anonymous function. So instead yeah, of having yeah. to write out the word function name arguments function mm-hmm. body. You can skip all of that boilerplate and just do arguments equals right arrow argument or uh, function body. And it's great. Okay, cool. And um, Babel 6 came out and, you know, that should be really exciting, right? Yeah. Well, I don't know if I'm that excited. 
So I, I always use Babel for the transpiler part. And yeah, yeah. you know, that, that's what it is to me. It, it takes ES6 code and somehow does something to turn it into not ES6 code, some kind of runnable ES5 code. Yeah. Well, apparently Babel has pivoted from just being a transpiler into being this weird tool chain, who knows what thing. I have no idea. So yeah. it, it's getting bigger and more encompassing than it was previously. And I don't know. I mean, it, it probably won't affect me too much. I'm sure I'll just find a guy to tell me how to make it do what I want it to do. But I really liked how easy it was before. You know, you just NPM include it and you're done. You get to go. Yeah. Well, now you have to now you have to define your plugins and all that. And, and there's there's and to make it easier, they made presets. Well, you know, I liked how easy it was before when the whole thing was one preset. Yeah. Yeah. But it's cool. The project's evolving. Everybody loves it. It's got eleven thousand stars on GitHub. Yeah, nice. everybody loves it. And I, I think I, you know, it, it's it's really great that Babel is the thing that that's taking off, and not like uh, the other one, TypeScript, or the yeah. other other one whose name I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's I lo- yeah I think it's good that it's ES6 that it's you know I think it's just showing people are ready for that. Well, and totally. uh, it's also nice that when ES6 gets implemented in browsers for real, <laughs> if that ever happens, uh, ES7, ES8, ES Next, whatever it might be, Babel can also just go up and you know do those things if they have to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's cool. Uh, let's see what else do we have here. We have the AMP project. That's right. I now, remember hearing about this. Yeah, this is the weirdest thing. So Google... Uh, thinks the internet is too slow and <laughs> decided to make a new HTML derivative thing called AMP HTML that builds on existing web technologies and so it can render like normal, but in fact it will load really fast and do cool things. So I don't know why it loads fast or loads differently. I think it just changes how some things load and in what order and, and how they parallel load and do stuff. Yeah. But yeah. what uh, I guess the real question is, what do you guys think about having not only this, but also that new Facebook instant stories thing and the new yeah. Apple, I don't know what it's called, but it's their Apple news. news. Apple News, yeah. yeah. All these f- like fake new HTML formats. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I, I, I guess I could see why it's in their business interest, but it. I mean, I generally would probably be more sympathetic to the argument that like the, adding all these weird subsets of HTML is just kind of. Uh, it would be cooler if those efforts were directed at H- at improving, you know, HTML five or a successor to it mm-hmm. um, I instead agree. of right because well with with the facebook and apple news scenarios particularly it's like these are things that are not only very proprietary um and that has you know impl- implications on, on the business end for the companies that use it but it's also like shutting out small folks who want to make make their own content it's right. it, it's not really discoverable for yeah um, so if you don't have your multi-million billion dollar business it's hard to break out right yeah yeah um so here here in the amp document how it works one thing we realized early on is that many performance issues are caused by the integration of multiple javascript libraries tools and (laughs) embeds into a page this isn't saying that javascript immediately leads to bad performance but once (laughs) arbitrary javascript is in play most bets are off because anything could happen at any time and that is so true because you know yeah. uh, if you go to the Verge page, how oh, many totally. how <laughs> many ads load onto the Verge page? A billion ads load onto the Verge page. <laughs> yeah, and it, it, and so their solution to this is, but the web perform- web platform has a great solution: custom elements and web components. AMP mm-hmm. components may have JavaScript under the hood, but it is coordinated with other components, so its composition into the page doesn't cause performance degradation. Yeah, I don't know about that. <sighs> So it yeah. sounds like say use use this instead. It's better, I promise. Uh, yeah, I I just think that's I think it's you know it's like yes, we want the web to be faster. We want uh, our little powerful our 
are powerful but not powerful enough smartphones um, to to be able to render faster. But is this really the solution we should be looking for? Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to limit how JavaScript works on these pages, and we're going to have to use custom, non-normal things to do it. Is is that really the best we can do? Yeah, I mean that even that that statement you read from the from the uh, Ant Project docs, it, it almost read like um, like things that other people do are slow, and you can't predict them. Use our thing that's slow and you can't predict them. We promise it's fast. Yeah. <laughs> right? And so they, they have a section here. Ads and analytics, while crucial for publishers, are a big part of the performance problem. So they must be a big part of the solution. Sites often deploy many <laughs> analytics providers. Ad serving is also a complicated ecosystem. Embedding an ad or analytics often implies giving up control of what eventually happens on the site because they can inject any JavaScript they want. AMP HTML does not allow this. So what an interesting thing. So for Google to to be making a system where ads and analytics aren't an, aren't a major part of how it works. I was going to guess that they only allow ads from their network. Yeah, right? That's that's what I was seeing too. I mean, I'm looking at one of the examples and they have this AMP ad tag. Yep. Uh-huh. And yeah, and the the type is AdSense and they've got uh-huh. the their client so ID in there. They basically just make a component that is an ad. I mean, I don't understand how it works technically because I haven't read the, the GitHub yeah. stuff yet, but I don't like it. Yeah, it just doesn't seem better. And it, and not only doesn't it seem better, it also seems to add confusion to the problem. So instead of exactly. making the, the web itself better, uh, now we have to make it, an AMP version, we have to make a web version, we have to make a Facebook instant version, and we have to make a yeah. Google News version. And then Microsoft is going to want a uh, uh, a Metro version, and, yeah. and and Samsung's going to want a Sammy version. It, it's just not a good deal. Yeah. So absolutely. looking on the AMP page, it looks for the tutorial for a, a, a basic one. You know, it's making an HTML tag with the word AMP or the lightning bolt in there, adding yep. a few things that include like a headline, date published, an image. So some yeah. general metadata about it, which... If there's a common standard, I guess could be pretty good for adapting. You know, if there if the web can agree on a standard for something like this, I think that would be the best. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe that's their attempt at what maybe that's what they're attempting to do here. But yeah, and I guess this is good. I mean, I get the idea um, for like static pages, you know, a blog page that isn't yeah. doing anything. But how many blog pages do you know these days that also don't do anything? Most blog pages look way better than this and have yeah. some more moving parts. Yeah. I yeah. I mean, I my litmus test for it is I could never see Gruber doing anything like this. <laughs> right? Right? It it seems it seems like in a lot of ways this is this is this is a very Gruber thing. Or it, it, it could be a very Gruber thing, like I just like my website to be a website. I don't need like I, I just I just want it to be the thing that I made it, right? <laughs> um, yeah, Gruber would never do this. Not only because but he would never do this. Not only yeah. because you know he's the Apple guy, but also because it's silly. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. What's what's his phrase? So, yeah. The the claim yeah. chowder. Oh, only a, well, claim chowder. Only a dingus would use this. Oh, of course, whatever. right? Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. I don't know. Uh, that that's basically the the gist of that. I mean. You know, maybe it will work out, but I, I just don't. I hope it doesn't. Yeah, it's it's a little bit scary, for sure. It's doing it wrong. Definitely. Well, time will tell. Yeah. I mean, I, I have I have to say, I have been using Apple News with some frequency, and it's been kind of nice to get the huge news outlets, but I've been kind of disappointed because... Um, so, weird fun fact about me is that I really enjoy listening to Canadian newscasts. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. I, I don't know why, but it's it's almost like a um, uh, it's I it, it's they they have a really different tone and it's really kind of fascinating or like reading reading Canadian news and I can't get I, I don't know if it's region locked or whatever but um, I can't get uh, CBC articles in Apple News and it makes me really sad. Oh, that's too bad. I know, right? But I mean, whatever. That's not for me. That's not really news. That's more entertainment. I just like to. <laughs> that's funny, <laughs> right? Oh my gosh! So. Quick aside here, if if you all haven't um, heard about the new Canadian Prime Minister, like look up his uh, his uh, uh, victory speech because it was it was something else. It was really adorable. 
like um that i don't know like they have all these slogans right um i i mean like we we've had slogans in our elections before like make america great again or whatever change you can believe in all that stuff yep um but they had this they had this really um really like um cute thing where they were like uh um so the new prime minister justin trudeau was just like uh you know like some people say that like um you know are, are really like pessimistic about our country's future and the future of the world or something like that i'm totally like messing it up and paraphrasing it and sounding weird but um um but what they don't know is in canada there's there's always uh there's always a chance to to improve or something like that and it was the most adorable thing i've totally hackneyed that now but it was just like oh look at you guys mm-hmm. being all canadian and stuff <laughs> I, remember I was in canada in must have been 2012 when the olympics were going on yeah and it was just so interesting to see canadian olympic coverage it was so totally much more, right so much more calm and relaxing from america <laughs> that's really interesting yeah. no totally like just their their whole attitude towards media is very different than what we have here they're, mm. they're the attitude of their reporters and the attitude of people towards being interviewed and working with the media it's very different it's huh. fascinating. that's that is very fascinating I, I didn't know there was such a difference yeah i mean like um there's this one interview show that i really like called as it happens i promise it's the last thing i'll say about canadian stuff but um <laughs> the, the what they do is they they interview a lot of you know it's it's kind of like uh, 60 minutes where they do like newsmaker interviews mm-hmm. um but uh as it happens one of the things that they often do is um, is they get you know either political leaders or um, or like international um, p- folks uh, or even just like people on the ground in certain scenarios to to come on and talk about things and um, like one of the things that I hear on almost every episode and this like all the t- like every time I hear it it makes me laugh a little bit um, so the interviewer will ask a question like well what do you what do you think this means for um, you know like agriculture in Alberta or something like that and they're like well, I don't know. I hope it means that. <laughs> I hope it means that uh, that things will be better. But, but I don't really know, right? And you never. I feel like you never hear that on American newscasts. I agree and, with you. I don't think you would yeah. ever hear. I don't know. Exactly. Yeah, right. Definitely. And it's it's just fascinating. Like there's little things like that that just make it really interesting to consume. Mm-hmm. I saw a, a clip of Fox News on Twitter today that mm-hmm. was they were um, announcing the new unemployment. Yep hourly workers is I think five percent yeah they, this you know they said the new unemployment rate is now lower than before and they said with only two hundred and sixty thousand jobs created <laughs> which is um which is a lot higher than the the uh that was the goal of 180 or something but they're trying to make it sound really bad but it was you know it's a good <laughs> thing that more jobs were made than they were planning <laughs> and the unemployment went went rate went down i don't yeah. know i don't know why they would even try and say it in a, in a bad way but yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh it's something else media are fascinating yeah anyhow um i guess that that's about all i have to say about about newsy things in canada so why don't we um, talk about but, uh some apple stuff let's do it let's hey do it. why not <laughs> so i don't know two weeks ago Almost two weeks ago, iOS nine point one came out. Nice. I updated. I updated to it in a hotel, and it was totally risky, <laughs> but totally worth it. Um, oh my gosh! Yeah. Now with Unicode eight, some more emoji. Hooray! Yeah. Which Android but, users don't get to have? I want to add. Oh really? Yeah, or. Well, so no, but, uh, when that update for you guys on iOS came out, everybody in the Android subreddit community freaked out and said, I can't see any emoji. What do I do? <laughs> and and then the Google team said, yeah, we'll work on it. Aww. <laughs> yeah. Well, I want to say Unicode 8 wasn't supposed to be released till later. And I think Apple was the first to release, release it. Maybe. Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I saw think... somewhere that I think the release date was... Not in September. Or no, yeah, right? October. No, maybe I could be wrong. I don't know. No, I, I think you're right about that. I think I think it was supposed to be later, certainly at least later this year. But it's I think this might be a really fascinating um look at how much Apple is involved with the Unicode consortium, right? Because mm-hmm. they're they're you know, certainly one of the larger uh larger players in that in that space. But um 
I mean, the, the, there are other other kind of examples of this too, where Apple was like, okay, this new thing is so much better. We'll put all of our, you know, we'll, we'll put a bunch of resources towards it and then we'll just release it before anybody else mm -hmm. <laughs> because we're Apple and YOLO. So Unicode yeah. 8 adds a total of 7,716 characters. Oh my gosh. Yep. That's crazy. Yikes. Wow. And it, and it was it was officially released in June technically so I guess oh okay oh the, the oh okay but yeah I think Apple I definitely think Apple uses it to their advantage they go as fast as they can so they can release it and have everyone say oh yeah my phone has these new up new and new emoji and then Android users are like what I don't have a better get an iPhone yeah but but it's interesting the Android or not Android the iOS releases that have new emoji, so iOS 8.3. Um, I don't know what was before 8.3 that had new emoji, but I hear people talking about these new emojis. And they're like, yeah, you got to update your phone and get new emojis. And yeah. that's the only time I hear people. Otherwise, I just, ugh, have another update. I'll just ignore it till later. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. But I, like the iOS 7 and the emoji updates are the, the ones that make the most impact. Have we talked about this? This sounds familiar. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. But yeah, it's definitely something interesting to talk about. So one of the problems for Android is, you know, Android updates are so rare. So uh -huh. people who buy a Samsung Galaxy S6 right now probably will never get these new emoji. Mm -hmm. Oh, gosh. So are there third party utilities that can update the fonts or probably not? Or? Because I don't think there's a way to inject system fonts on Android. Yeah. So I don't. Really? Yeah, I don't. I don't know if there's any other really good way. I was looking at, or on Twitter, someone was saying the the I don't know what it's called internally, but the Apple emoji font is the only font that Apple has that is not trademarked or copywritten or something. So people oh, yeah. are well, that's investigating nice of them. that. Huh. I, don't know. I think I think it's probably some standard thing, mm -hmm. but they they've been hushed up about it. Yeah. Huh. Um let me I don't know, let me look for um it's called Apple Color Emoji. There's a Wikipedia page. Um I have no idea. It's some tweets on Twitter that was well, a few days ago. Anyway, yeah. It's a new emoji and they had a new updates to sorting in another category or something like that. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Also new with Apple is the Apple TV fourth generation is now Ooh. up for sale. I don't know, a week ago or something. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. Um, I don't know. Yeah, it's been interesting to see what it's like. I think I'll be buying one when I come home in January. I have an Apple TV third generation, but App Store, <laughs> come on, of course. Yeah, way worth it. Um, totally. Oh, you and Brandon, you already have one. That's right. That's right. Um, so I was hoping to get it on launch day, but um. I didn't pay for expedited shipping, which seems to have been a, a good thing because I've heard murmurs that um, there was some delays in shipping. So people who paid for the expedited shipping uh, actually ended up getting it the same day I did. Okay. Um, how sad. Right? So right. What, how many days after release did you get it? Uh, so I got it on Tuesday, which is, I think, three or four days after release. Yeah. Okay. So not, not, too, not too shabby. Hey, but... that's about how long it takes to load a video on the normal old Apple TV. <laughs> <laughs> womp, womp. yeah you're totally totally right about that yeah. <laughs> see so i i didn't have an apple tv third gen i actually uh still had the second gen apple tv mm -hmm. um and that thing was uh slow as molasses let's mm -hmm. say yeah it yeah it, netflix would keep keep uh you know disconnecting mid mid show um Anytime you tried to watch a movie, it would basically try to download the whole movie first and then start playing, even though it technically supported the um, the ability to play a movie. To stream it. To stream it, yeah. Yeah, huh. yeah, yeah I've, uh, well, my parents have a second-gen Apple TV, so I use it sometimes when I'm at home. But yeah. I think it hasn't seen an, an uh, OS update in a couple of years because it basically oh, yeah. stops at I iOS 6. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's been two or three years now. Yeah. Yeah. The thing that I found kind of funny about it is that we kept getting new channels, even though the UI didn't change a bit. So yeah, um, that's that's a good yeah, that's interesting. But anyhow, the new one is much better in some ways and much worse in others. 
Um, entering in passwords is miserable, as pretty much anyone who has one of these will tell you. Um, there used to be an app called Remote um, that you could use to use your iPhone um, as a remote for the Apple TV. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that hasn't been updated for the fourth gen one. And it sounds Aww. like, according to uh, according to Gruber, um, the the uh, the the news inside of Apple seems to be that they're not going to. Uh, release a version of the remote app for this new Apple TV. I don't understand. Like, so when you when you pair the TV with your phone, is that a thing? Do you pair it? It uh, uh, finds that on your network if you send a uh, iTunes home sharing, at least on the third gen. That's yeah. what I like. Used. I find it really weird because you're signed into your Apple account on your phone, presumably. And why wouldn't it just like ask you, like, "Hey, phone, will you authenticate with me?" And then it would just not need a password or anything. That's what you think, right? But that, that's um, that's how the um that's how you the touch ID on your phone and it yeah that, or yeah. something yeah. like that. That's how um the what do you call that thing in the other room? The next player works. But I think a lot of it too is typing your Netflix password and your HBO Go pla- password and yeah. all these other services. That's true. So just having a keyboard so you can type it fast without everyone seeing. Tee your your password is lame or something. Yeah. Yeah. And just it's annoying to have to swipe all over the place to get mm-hmm. on a virtual keyboard. Yeah, definitely. Um, but I guess w- once you log in, it seems to be pretty fine. Um, and that's uh, that that's the 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 new touchpad uh, as as the interface is really quite fun. Um, I downloaded a couple of games to it. The one that I'm currently addicted to is Crossy Road. There's a multiplayer oh, version of, of Crossy Road now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it is the best it is so cool um it's essentially the same game that you'd play on your phone or an ipad but it's still so much fun uh so netflix does, seems to be mm-hmm. how does multiplayer work i don't remember do you connect yeah. your phone if you have another apple remote or yeah so you connect another uh another ios device okay. um I've, I've done it with my ipad air 2 and with my 5s um so so you need to have the same app installed and everything and then yep okay cool but it's really fun. It's it's kind of like uh do you all remember Twitch plays Pokemon or yep. more recently yep. Twitch installs Arch Linux? That's the best. <laughs> oh yes. Yeah, so uh Twitch plays Pokemon is it's uh, that's kind of the same dynamics you get. Basically you're fighting theoretically you're kind of fighting the other person because you're you both control um the the bird or the the character that you're moving through the Crossy Road universe. Mm-hmm. Um and if you don't know what Crossy Road is, it's it's essentially a a, a Frogger clone. Um, with a name like Flappy Bird, um, it's it's really addicting. Even though it seems it seems when it, when you describe it that way, it's kind of sounds kind of boring. But it's really really solid. And Apple demoed it with their Apple TV announcement. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Have that you? Did. So what other apps do you have? You said Netflix. Yeah, Netflix. Um, I think that's it for now. I think I think we downloaded the PBS app because I okay. uh, gotta gotta get my uh, my Downton Abbey fix. What about your yeah. PBS NewsHour fix? <laughs> well, yeah, news hour too, of course. Yeah. But, um, Do you, is but, there a YouTube yeah, app first. too? I'm assuming. I think I think there is a YouTube app, but I haven't downloaded it yet. I'm almost always. I, I very rarely navigate to YouTube videos from the TV. Yeah. Um, so this is I, a I silly question. Yeah, yeah. No worries. So, is there like uh, on the new iPads? You know, there's the little you know video player yeah. side mode thing. Do they yeah. have that for the Apple TV now? I don't believe they do. Why? Such an obvious yeah, feature. You're right. You're right. That's a the good question. Picture in picture. Yeah. I think I was uh, Steve Trufton Smith. I think it's his name. Yeah. I don't know. I like what he tweets a lot. Uh, he was yeah. poking around. He found that folder support is very, very pretty much complete in TVOS, although it's not available yet. Um, I think yeah, he's looking right. at picture in picture is looks like it's pretty close to being ready too. So maybe okay, they're so, testing it out and yeah. it will come in a future version. Point point yeah. update. Yeah. Okay. Same with charts in the app store in the app store. They weren't there immediately, but right. they are there now. Because that so seems I'm, like I'm, such an obvious and useful feature for a TV. Yeah. Picture in picture. You bet. Yeah. I think it was I have the feeling that they just kinda slapped yeah. it together, released it with the anticipation that they're gonna improve it over time. Kind mm-hmm. of like the Apple Watch with Watch OS one being Yep pretty limited yeah yeah and hopefully i've also i think on atp they're talking about this that that's right it didn't you know it it launched and 
it had a few limitations and hopefully that's not going to affect it in the larger picture. Mm-hmm. And same with the Apple Watch because a lot of apps are still watch OS 1. And I don't know about you, Brandon, but I don't use third-party apps very much on my watch. Yeah, the only one I use is Overcast because I am cheap. <laughs> you don't even use the swipe up in like the um, – because this is the media play yeah. option. Oh, yeah. I, I use that all the time. Um, but if I want to start a podcast – um, from my watch, and I'm listening to music. Then I'll then I'll use Overcast. Um, yeah, but yeah, the 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 swipe up to get to the media control is like awesome. I actually have that set as the one that will immediately come up when I swipe up. Okay. Um, I, I guess that's not really a thing that you can set um explicitly, but I I use it when I I, I use it all the time. That is, I guess, functionally the same. <laughs> mm-hmm. So yeah. I actually got to uh, play with an Apple Watch at the Best Buy demo, and oh, nice. Man, that UI, you know, it's a lot more responsive than I thought it would be, but man, that UI is just not, not normal. I don't know what to do. You know, you can, go into, it. you can go into an app and then you can click a button to go back to the home screen. And if you click another button, you can go back to the watch face. Confusing. I don't know. Yeah, I think it's, it's a little confusing. Um, I'm sure you get used to it really fast. Yeah. And sometimes I'll be, you know, like today I was doing laundry and I wanted to go see a timer. But my last use app was the activity app or something. And so I double tap on the home button wheel thing or bobber. What is it even called? Crown. Yeah. Crown. Uh, yeah. So there we go. Crown. I double tap, double press that. Assuming it's going to take me to one app, but it takes it to a different one. I have to hit it, go back, go home. Yeah. Use the home screen, miss, miss an app, exit the app again, and then go to the right one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I have so many apps on my screen that I don't use. It's often hard to find the app I'm looking for. Yeah, because they're microscopic. Because I, have, I have all of these apps that I'm like, but maybe I'll use this at some point. Just <laughs> yeah. Me, and I, I don't. Like, why do I have the Amazon app on my watch? I don't need that. Have they really yeah. been doing accidental tech podcasts for three years? I think they have. How is that even possible? I know. It feels like just a year ago they were... Uh, just just just, just, just stopping almost. neutral and just starting this like that is amazing yeah i think yeah. i started listening not that i mean when did i i don't even remember when did i get i think it was whenever i downloaded overcast that's yeah. when i started listening let me see when my purchase date is on overcast if i yeah. can find it i started listening around episode 82 i think so that's about a year and a half in i think a little over a year and a half I started listening after Neutral 8 ended. Oh, yeah, that's right. I started listening, I think, in end of May. So not that long. I think it was episode 15 or some 115, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Yep. So it's a pretty, it's pretty interesting. I think this is probably, it might very well be the only podcast that I've listened to continuously um, for the, for that long, right? I think that was probably the first podcast I, I started listening to um, whatever two two years ago when I started getting back into podcasts. I think I've been listening to Back to Work for like five years now. Oh, yeah. Yep. I only listen to ATP, the new podcast that, that Marco and David Smith yeah, started. Yeah, what is it called? That's right. I can't... Under, the, or Under the Radar? Is yeah, that something yeah. like that. It's a good first episode. I have to listen to it still. It's nice and short. I could... It was, um, I went from school to home and I listened to it the entire time at nice. like 1.5 times speed with smart speed. Yep. Smart speed, yeah. Smart yeah, you, you people and your go. fancy iOS only app features. Hey, you just, just know that you can always get an iPhone. Yeah, yeah, I can just always do that. <laughs> or yep. buy an old iPod Touch and just use it for Overcast. <laughs> oh, man, those iPod Touches, those aren't any good. Nobody wants those. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I I remember when iPod touches were like the the coolest thing, and now now they're back before everyone had smartphones. But it's Apple's fault. Yeah, right. iPod touch. It's entirely Apple's fault. They oh, could totally. have made those really great. Oh, absolutely, but, absolutely. But they make more on the phone, and ultimately, I think the phone is a better experience. So I don't know. We could make it just as good as the phone if they wanted to. Yeah, but cellular yeah. data. Yeah, but they don't get anything out of that. Yeah, I suppose. I, I guess like it's so part of it, I think, is definitely that like 
they can they can they get more from a from a phone than they would from from an iPod Touch. They get more more profit. Yeah, basically, definitely by by far. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's it's still just like so weird to think that ten like as as recently as five or ten years ago, um, like that iP- iPods were like a thing, right? I like I don't even really yeah. think about iPods no. any anymore. Mm-hmm. Like I, I don't really see anyone with one. Huh? Yeah, I yeah. don't see them anywhere. I I do have a shuffle and a nano. And every so often I think about what if I just, I used to, I used to shuffle for a little bit, I think mm-hmm. sophomore year, I went like a month and used it because I listened to a lot of music then on the go and it would just drain my phone battery. So I'm yeah. like, oh, so he's not quite shuffle. That works. Yeah. Yeah. And so I did yep. that for a while, but that was fine. But I used to use the square nano. So the square clippy nano. Which, oh yeah, for lack of a better phrase, mm-hmm. um, as a fake Apple Watch from about two thousand nine, two thousand nine or two thousand ten to uh, about twenty twenty twelve or something like that. Yeah, it's a long time. Did you? How was that as a watch? Uh it it was pretty. It was pretty good. Um, there was a point where it stopped holding. It stopped keeping time. Uh, okay, which was, which was not good. Um, no. <laughs> that's around when I stopped using it, but. <laughs> How how yeah. would it? What do you mean? Stop keeping time. Well, it so it would just like hold the same time for a long, uh, for a long stretch, or it would just be like, um, like blatantly off from whatever time it actually was. Like, I think I checked it at six p.m. once, and it was like, oh well, it's two thirty a.m. And I'm like, nope, it's definitely not. It wasn't after a sync. It wasn't after a software update. It was just it would just like stop under. It, it must have been like something about it was corrupted or something. But yeah, very, and at that strange. point, you don't want a watch to be that far off. Yeah, right? Because you have to go plug it into a computer and sync it with iTunes. Yep. It's not very yep. ideal. Yep. yep. Well, now now that I look at the Wikipedia article, um, there's somebody in 2013, or yeah, uh, TUAW compared the iPod Nano to the Samsung Galaxy Gear and considered it a three-year-old, or considered the three-year-old model to be a better, cheaper smartwatch than the Galaxy Gear because it's more complete functionality in comparison imagine that which is, which is pretty uh that's 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 uh pretty harsh words considering there's no uh cellular uh or there's there's no connection to a cell phone or a smartphone with yeah, it I would say that's, <laughs> yeah 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 huh. it's because but, the gear was awful yeah i don't know i, I never saw anyone with a gear but um uh, a bunch of people in Seaside classes now seem to be liking their Android Wear devices. Yeah, I've, um, I've seen a few people with uh, a Moto 360. Yeah, um, mostly 360s. And that's the only one I can really tell like from a distance because it's round and it's gigantic. Yeah, right? Uh, I'm I'm thinking about getting the, the Asus Zen Watch 2. Might do that nice. soon, but we'll see. You know, I, I don't know how much value there is in, in uh, these uh, watches yet. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I can barely imagine life without uh, an Apple Watch. I, I've there have been days that I haven't used it and it's been fine, but it's really, really, really nice to be able to get those notifications um, in a way that I, I really feel is like less intrusive mm-hmm. than um, than having to actually like dig my phone out of my pants pocket or whatever. Yeah, that's kind of yeah, how I, I feel, feel too. Yeah, I can just look, just glance at. It. I don't even have to touch it. I can just lift it up, see what the notification is. Then I can, you know, as most notifications are, it's not really important, and I can just go back to whatever I was doing. Yeah, but then I, I have to wear a watch. <laughs> I don't wanna. Have you ever yeah. really worn a watch? Yeah, right. I have. When I was at Central, I used to wear a watch frequently. Okay, I wore a watch probably from partway through elementary school up until freshman year of college when my watch band broke, and I'm like, no one really wears a watch; they just use their phone. I'm just gonna try that. And yeah. that's what I was doing until I got my Apple Watch. But when I was a kid, I had like the Timex kids with an elastic band. I would nice. sleep with my watch on. I was a total fan of the watch. And then as time went on, I had a couple, I had a watch one time that would connect wirelessly to a 30 pin connector that I could plug into an iPod and I could nice. wirelessly control the iPod. Well, that's cool. That was kind of, that was kind of gimmicky and cool. But I think that the watch awesome. battery died over time and so the range was less and less and less until i just ultimately got a new watch Mm -hmm. (laughs) gotcha yeah see i still have one of those like standard casio watches right so not not like the calculator watch but yeah um the it's it's definitely a clear sibling to the calculator watch Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. 
And I, I use that probably from, I don't know, like fifth grade on up to, um, no, maybe not fifth grade. Uh, I don't know, like middle school on up. Um, and it's still, it's still going strong. Surprisingly, I've only had to replace the battery like twice. Um, nice. but now the Apple watch is much, uh, much, much nicer and, uh, uh, more, more useful, I think, than that thing is. I still use it sometimes, though, like when I'm camping or something, and bringing yeah. an Apple Watch doesn't really make any sense. No. Yeah. I, I think I'm going to eventually be getting a second charger from Apple Watch, so I have like a, you know, a, I think they make a one meter or even a .3 meter charging yeah. cable that I can just bring for travel, mm-hmm. because yeah. it's kind of ridiculous bringing a two meter cable for my no, watch. Totally. totally. Um, also, what, what do you, are you going to get any uh, extra bands, or do you have more bands for your watch? That's a good question. Uh, the white watch band that I have right now is starting to get a little bit grayer, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but it's definitely getting at that sandblasted quality that we discussed earlier uh, yeah. in an earlier episode. So I think I'm probably going to swap to um, a new, possibly possibly a red band instead. Okay. Ooh, um, red. Yep. Yeah, I'm, right. I'm thinking about... Um, I'm not going to do it at least until I get home, but maybe another sport band because I have the black with the space gray yeah, sport yeah. version. I might get a, I don't know if it's an orange one or, you know, kind of a bright red or orange one. That might be kind of nice, but I'm yeah. also looking to get not the Apple leather one because that's quite a bit of money, but yeah. buying a pair of lugs and getting a leather band for another watch and just using that. Yeah. Nice. So we'll see what happens, how it works. Cause I feel you know, if I'm dressing up for something, a leather band might be a nice touch too. Yeah, cool. Or if if I'm feeling a leather band one day. Yeah, yeah. Somebody I work with uh, bought into a Kickstarter where they were selling um, Apple Watch bands, and he had okay. kind of mixed results with that. But I don't think they were using official lugs. So if if you've got if you've got a, a supplier for those lugs, that's like half the battle. It sounds like. Yeah, I think Apple makes their own lugs. But I have was not looking. I think you have to buy them in bulk, so I'm not sure. Oh, Maybe gosh. we should buy some lugs and just sell them on eBay or yeah, something. Right. <laughs> oh yeah, they at beginning of uh, October they have made for Apple Watch lugs. Maybe that is what I'm buying then. I'm not sure. Oh yeah, you buy. Geez, you buy 25 for 11, or oh then 11.33 per. So yeah, it's like almost three hundred dollars for twenty five. Oh my gosh! <laughs> or the forty two, or you can buy two hundred for eighteen hundred dollars. Oh my gosh! 42. Yikes! Well, yeah, I'd I'd probably go in with you on on twenty five sets, and then we could potentially resell them at in smaller packs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty ridiculous. But yikes! Yeah, because I think. Definitely. If a band breaks, that's, you know, a band. But if the lug doesn't fit, you're not going to use it really because it gets caught in things. It looks like crap. You know, it's. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. So any, oh. anything else to say on the uh, Apple TV? <laughs> uh, yes, there is one other thing I should probably mention. Uh, and that is the strange network issues I've been having since adding the fourth gen Apple TV to the to our Wi-Fi network. Okay. Um, occasionally, about once per day, um, it seems that every device other than the Apple TV will just get surreptitiously kicked off the network with no warning. Wow. It's happened to me every every day since Tuesday at, um, at seemingly random times. It might be because our Wi-Fi router is ancient. It's like the first generation of the airport extreme uh, to have 802.11n. Okay. So back back from 07. Um, well, just ask just... Syracuse for one of the hundreds somebody sent him. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Oh, my gosh. I mean, it's that router has been solid from day one. But um, Yeah, my parents reason... have a, I think it's the 2008 model. This Whatever was the newest in October 08 of the 802.11n. Yep extremes yep 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 i think we have like one from july 07 so just a little bit about a year year and some change earlier and yeah. yikes it's it's pretty horrific as such that i've i've i'm kind of advocating that we obtain at least a second router and run a second a separate wi-fi network that's just for um for people who need to like get work done right mm-hmm. yep. <laughs> it, it just so happened that this this hit me at a time when i was um 
um, I had an assignment due. So I was like, no. Um, and I, I ended up pairing to my phone, so it was all okay. But it's just yeah, remarkably you don't want your to go down. Yeah, it's the yeah. worst. Yeah. But, um, you know, pro- presumably with a router upgrade, that should be fixed. Other, other than that, um, like loading video is like ridiculously smooth and ridiculously quick. Um, so I've never had problems with that, really. Um, it's just the the network issues that we've seen that have been just really I wonder what that's about. <laughs> I mean, I uh, wonder if that's yeah. something like it's seeking for devices it can talk to or what? I wonder. Yeah, that's that's kind of my hypothesis. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Hmm. Well, that's about all I have to say about Apple TV, too. Um, so that just leaves our final segment, which is who have you followed on Twitter recently? Well, I have followed a few people this time. Nice. Um, so let, let's begin with one of the people we talk to all the time on Twitter, among us, which is Max. Uh, I have no idea where Max came from, but apparently he listens to the show, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, um, Max is I can, awesome. I can say a little bit Max. Max, okay. yeah. um, we went to the same junior high school together. That's where I met him. Oh, cool. Um, he went to Highland, and I went to Central, and he goes to the U. Nice. Nice. So. Yeah, he's he's a cool cat. Um, Very much I know so. Him, I know him through uh, work. He uh, is a developer with a, a different department, but there's this really awesome thing at the U called Code People, which is like a staff gathering of sorts where developers from a bunch of different departments get together and talk about stuff, programming at the university. Um, it's, it's pretty darn awesome, and I met him at one of the Code People meetings. Um, we actually worked uh, during Campus Code Fest on uh, a class search, uh, a new class search system built with React, uh, and that was way cool. I didn't get to stick around for as long as I uh, as I wished I could, though, because I think that was around the time of another outage. But <laughs> um, yeah, he, he is a crazy cool cat. Mm-hmm, definitely. Yeah, and so uh, he also has, importantly to note, a dog that looks similar to my dog. Oh, dog yeah, buddy. that's right. Yeah, so very, very important to note that. I also have followed um, Steve Francia, who wrote Hugo, which is a Go-based static website generator. Uh, so that's pretty cool. I've also followed Evan Yo or you. Um, don't email me. Um, uh, he is the creator of Vue.js. Uh, you can also uh, go onto the Vue.js forums, and uh, there's a page thread thing that uh you can ask him questions and so i asked him so what did what did he do in college because you know he's he worked at google he works at meteor now so how did he get into doing all this stuff well it turns out he was an art major nice so uh i guess uh i guess i guess things change yeah that's awesome yeah i like his website it's so simple yep cool totally yeah he seemed he also seems like a very cool cat very much Every time you reload his page, it's a new graphic. It like regenerates it on load. If you go to oh, fmu.me, yeah. that's cool. How does it do it? Oh, there's I don't know. There's a, I like it. There's some script. You can see it. It's at the bottom of the script or HTML. Can't do nice. that with AMP. <laughs> you sure can't. Is it is it just an SVG transformation or? Um, I'm blind. Sure no, it's it's Canvas. Yeah. It's, so I guess Canvas is vaguely like SVG, sort of. In, in the sense that it's rasterized. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Ooh, look at that. He's using bitwise shifts, too. What a cool cat. Very. See, I can't I can't code that. Like, I don't... When I see a bitwise shift, I turn the other way and shift out of there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, my I gosh. Haven't, I haven't done much bitwise things. I'm So I'm in 2021 right now. Seaside 2021. Having fun? Yep. And what what is that class? Sorry. That's no worries. Machine architecture and organization. So okay. we're learning x86 and now y86. So y86 is the sort of fake Intel assembly yeah. that we're going to use to. And um, so, um, my partner and I, we were totally going to do that assignment, and then yeah. we didn't. Oh gosh. <laughs> yeah. I don't like know. like it's, towards it's the end of the something. semester, that that class gets so compressed and it was awful. Oh my gosh. Did, who did you have, if you don't mind me asking? Um, the guy who's always late, whose name is... What's his name? Uh, I don't know. It's not Davalos, is yes, it? Yes, the guy who's always late. Right, Davalos. Seriously? Yeah, he was always oh late God. when he was teaching our class. See, I, I have him as my professor, too. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm afraid now. 
he he was very awesome as a professor for oh, 19 yeah he's a great professor right? but he was always late to 2021 when we had it yeah yeah oh Lordy. okay who yeah. do you guys follow so i followed um a bunch more people since the last time we've done this but i picked three um the first one is versace.js which is a um it's not a bot per se it's it's not it, there's no like name of a person attached to it it's just kind of like a i don't know for lack of a better phrase like a brand account and occasionally there's some kind of funny um funny programmer tweets on there right um like one from november 2nd is like iframes not even once and it has a screenshot of like uh well what happens when when iframes go bad yeah <laughs> you know stuff stuff like that uh i find it really funny <laughs> Um, and then there's another one that's Will Duffy, who is, um, he works at, uh, Ride and he's actually the co-organizer of Brooklyn JS, which is, um, a JavaScript users group in, uh, as you might expect, Brooklyn. Um, he hangs out with the, you know, Jen Schiffer, Tom Dale type folks. Um, so his, um, one of his tweets that I thought was really awesome was from November 6. Imagine a world where every child gets to uh, gets to raise their own David Hanemeyer Hansen as their own. Um, and I just thought that'd be really funny. Uh, mm -hmm. DHH, as he's known as yep. the, the Rails guy. Mm -hmm. okay. I thought that was just kind of cute. Funny, funny little tweet. Um, and then finally, BB Edit, which is a um, text editor slash pseudo IDE. Um, that a lot of people, uh, especially people who've been working in uh, web development for a long time, yep. use. Mm -hmm. um, like basically everyone, everyone who I work with, like swears by it. Um, and I, I tweeted a little while ago that I was having some trouble with my text editors, like Vi, Emacs, and Adam all just like up in I don't know. They freaked out, right? They Adam, out. Adam they lately has been so unstable. I don't know why. It's really freaking me out. I just uninstalled Adam because I, I'm like, I can't handle this anymore. Yeah. So I, I tweeted a little while ago, um, you know, sh what, sh what should I do? What new text editor should I try next? Um, and then after that, I said, BB Edit. I hear BB Edit's good. Should I try BB Edit? And they interacted with me on that. And that was kind of cute. Like they said, uh, um, uh, not that I'm biased, but uh, <laughs> but why not? Yeah, there we go. That's the one. And I was just like, aw. That's that's fun. Hashtag engagement on hashtag social media. Um, that that was kind of cool. A couple of other people recommended stuff like uh, with uh, like the, the the VI from Homebrew. So instead of the the VI that comes with um, with OS ten, it would just be um, uh, the the one that comes from the Homebrew like dupes cask. Um, I, I tried that out and I used it with Tmux to get kind of an IDE out of it. Um, and that's worked actually surprisingly well, but um, I don't know. I'm I'm kind of I miss Adam in a lot of ways, not the least of which because I could script it with JavaScript. That helps, um, which of course, which of course is is kind of my jam. Um, but yeah, so there you go. I guess those are my three. How about you? Um, I I will go reverse order because that's then has this because that's the order I followed. Uh, of, there's always Bird website API, which is fake API, which makes fun of Twitter API. Yeah. I've I've seen this retweeted a whole bunch, probably due to Paul Haddad of Tweetbot. Um, I think he retweets things a fair amount, or a couple other yeah. developers. I don't know. I think they're good good spoofs on Twitter changes. You know, last week being the favorite and like. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you know, absolutely. Um, you know, four days ago when that was announced, they said after seeing user reactions, we've decided to make. It changed to likes going forward. They will be now using the poop smiling or smiling pile of poo emoji update apps nice. accordingly. I, I mean, so, I, I love this kind of parody Twitter account. These are just the best. Yeah. And I don't know why there are only 2000 some followers because there should totally be more than that. Yeah. Right. Um, I have also followed Alex software. They make, I think one app fog of world that I've been using for. Yeah, that's right. Two years now. They haven't tweeted since February, but I mean, there's hope that they'll eventually be releasing Fog of World 2 because Fog of World 1 is somewhat of a horrible experience on <laughs> these versions of iOS. Yeah, yeah it looks a little use, old. Yes, yeah. and performance is, has gotten worse as time has gone on. 
Um, but it's and still a cool app. It's still a very cool app. I still use it. And whenever I'm traveling, I bring my iPhone 5 along because it's not connected to a cellular network and it just uses its GPS and tracks. And so I am fully invested in this app and I hope it continues to live for more years to come because I've yeah, nice. invested a lot of uh, battery cycles in this. Totally. Um, also, I followed, or maybe I refollowed, I may have unfollowed him at one point, Jonathan uh, Zeroski, I don't know how to say that. Um, yeah. He's he's a guy, a uh, forensic scientist. Um, he does, he's like a hacker, pretty much. He's in Iceland right now, apparently, so he's posting nice photos there. Yeah, nice. Um, otherwise, he's more of a uh, an Apple and security person. Nice. Has a pretty raunchy sense of humor, I think. <laughs> gotcha. I well, I yeah. just followed him. He seems very cool, too. Yeah. I, I follow a lot of security people on Twitter, I realize. Yeah, right? Security is like, good for you. Apple and security is like my main core of people I follow on. And jailbreaking Apple kind of iOS mm-hmm. things. Yeah. So, I don't know. Yeah. When the yeah. UK passed their new... I believe he also has a dog, which is also very important. Yeah. Nice. Then you're set. So, yeah. Cool. Great. When the UK was making the new laws last week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's week, right. I just saw a tweet after a tweet about it. So. Yeah, that's that's right about the um, the encryption thing, how David Cameron was all like, uh, nobody should be able to encrypt stuff, which is like basically outlawing the factorization of prime numbers. But yeah, such I a mean, strange thing. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever. I, I, I'm going... I'm looking at it with the assumption that it will not fly for very long. Yeah. Yep. That would be a very good thing. Or all it to... takes is boycotting of many companies, and then instantly the UK will be like, oh, actually, we're kidding. Yeah, right? So. If only that would work. Well, I mean, I think there are people on Twitter calling for Apple to not sell iPhones there until it was encryption was legal. Because, I mean, if it's it's not going to be really be enforced... I mean, it can't be like for an iPhone. Oh, can't sell iPhones here because there's encryption on it. I don't know. Well, so th- that's that's the thing. So a company somewhere will have to eventually stand up to the things that are wrong here. And until mm-hmm. we can get that company to do it, then that's just not going to work. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it has to be a Facebook, an Apple, a Google, a Microsoft. It has to be somebody gigantic to do it. Yeah. Yeah. We'll say, I've got one thing that is not in the show notes doc, but I think you guys might get a kick out of it. It might, might be a good thing to add to the show if you don't mind. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Um, I'm going to just paste this article in. Um, it's from a entity called Foxglove Security. Um, not too long ago, they posted about um, this rather icky um, uh, unserialized vulnerability in oh, yeah. a lot of Java application servers. Yeah. Uh-huh. Did you did you look at that? I How heard about it, like? and I'm like, oh yeah, mm-hmm, Java. What now? Yep, mm-hmm. serialization. Yep. Knew that was coming. Yep, yep. It's kind of it's kind of scary. Not gonna lie, but I mean, and especially with like a uh, web logic being like the Oracle mm-hmm. um, application server and JBoss being, of course, the the Red Hat one. Like, yikes! Lots. Yeah, of... those are those are used quite heavily. Yeah, lots of lots of big important things use those, and it would be cool if yeah this thing would be fixed. But yeah, that's I, I found that to be kind of an interesting read. I think it just came out yesterday or today, so mm-hmm. probably yesterday. Yeah, people, I'll have to read that in more detail. But that is it, it's it's um this is kind of like I love this kind of stuff, but it's also the best kind of thing to show why Java sucks. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. Oh my gosh, totally. So I I know this is about serialization, but is it a is it just Java serialization, or is it serializing into, um, like JSON or something? Um, I think it's about so so it's about. Uh, I, I don't think it's specific to JSON, but JSON is definitely affected by it. I, okay. I believe, right? Yeah. So if, I, if you're using like like JSON or anything like yep. that to to do it, I think under the hood it, it still implements that serializable yep. interface. Okay, yeah. So then it is Java serialization. Man, that's really mm-hmm. bad. And man, did I tell you about Java yet? <laughs> yeah. Right. I, I oh remember gosh. I remember a few I guess it was last spring I was using JSON and 
I remember complaining on Twitter and some guy yelled at me for complaining it, about it. But anyway, <laughs> um, I, I, I really hate that I had to use a third party library to, you know, decrypt some JSON. I don't even yeah. mean decrypt. I mean, you know, unjson the JSON. Yeah. And that, yeah. that feels terrible. The language should have totally have a standard library for that by now. Well, anyway, yeah. well, it turns out it wouldn't have mattered because the standard library for serializable was broken. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. So I guess I don't know if it's, well, so it is definitely an issue with the serializable interface, mm -hmm. but it's it's not like the actual spot where it becomes vulnerable is if the thing that implements the serializable interface is um, basically doesn't sanitize input, right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. I, I the way I understand it, it's kind of like the little Bobby drop tables thing. Oh yeah. KCD. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, like that's that's one of the things that I find kind of strange about um, some pro programming languages and frameworks is that. Um, there are some things that it's like, well, you know, like C, C is the greatest example where it's like, well, I mean, you're the programmer. You should know <laughs> you what should you're doing. Do, yeah. D don't do things if you don't know what you're doing. And right. that begs the question. Do don't accept user input. Doing? Stop yeah. that. Yeah. Hard coded all every time. Oh, no. Yeah. Yep, exactly. So I, I was reading that today. Seems like an interesting. Uh, I'm going to push bullet this to my phone and read it when I get lunch. Do it. Okay, so here, here it right. goes. It's, Push it's... bullet. Oh yeah. You're in the late lunch. Well, you know how it is. Yeah. I I ate my brunch at about that time for mm -hmm. me. Yep. Today. There you go. I'm talking in the future. Ooh. Ooh. Oh no. What what happens? What happens in the future, Brian? Well, the sun set at 4:19 p.m. Oh my gosh. Which is I think a half hour earlier than you guys. So yeah. You have an hour more of sunlight than me, Whipper. Yeah. Yikes. It's it's been really disorienting to have the to to the, have it turn dark so early. I know, nowadays. it is so, like, it, it's awful. Like we're we're getting to that time of the year where like I'll go into work and it'll be dark out, and I'll leave work and it'll still be dark out. I remember those days at the U when I would go to class for an eight AM class and then be done at a four thirty class and it's like, oh my gosh, it's dark. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm looking up right now the on dis, from December 10th through 19th the sunset here will be at 3:37 p.m. Oh my gosh. <laughs> when does sun, when does the sun rise then for you all? Um the latest it rises is at um I guess 8 8:39 a.m. Oh my gosh. Starting a little after the solstice but yeah. So that's a total of like seven hours of daylight. Yep, seven hours for the oh first. Oh my gosh! Minute. Yikes! Better stand outside then and tell your time. Yeah, yeah, Ugh, it's gonna be something. But yeah, it's the time change was a week earlier here than in the U.S. So mm -hmm. um, it was interesting seeing people complain about that, and I'm like, <laughs> it's been a week already. <laughs> but um, yeah, totally. But yeah, it's um, it's dark here. I wake up and it's not light, and I come home. This last week I was doing group projects, so I came home when it was dark. I came yeah. home oh, on Friday when it was still light, and it was uh -huh. still light. It was crazy. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yep. Yeah, cherish those days while they last. <laughs> yeah. But I think people in the summer here just love it up. Oh, my God. They have – let me actually check what the daylight hours are during the summer months because that's probably complete craziness compared to um, yeah. the Twin Cities. Um. Let's go July 2016. No, what's it? June is the longest day? Presumably, yeah. Something around June. Yeah. Okay. Oh, my God. That's so early. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, the earliest it'll sunrise is June uh, 21st at 4.25 a.m. And it will set at 9.58 p.m. Wow. Sun oh my gosh. Sunrise at 4. Wow. So 17 and a half hours of sun. Hmm. <laughs> Well, there you go. Wow. Yeah, I remember yeah. when I was in Denmark in 2010, I was out and it was 11 p.m. and there's still light in the horizon. <laughs> it doesn't, it sets, but just barely. Yep. And going yikes. farther north is even more ridiculous. Yikes, yikes, yikes. Yeah, I bet. Well, yeah, because that's due to you all being at a higher latitude, right? Yeah, we're um, at, I think, 56 degrees. Nice. Now. Nice. Yeah, we're down at forty six. I think. Yeah, I think. I might have gotten. Like 
I think I've gotten latitude and longitude mixed up, but something along those lines. Nice. Well, I guess that probably just about does it for this episode. I think um, it does. Where, all right. Where can we find you next week, Brian? Um, you can find me on Twitter. That's probably the best place. Um, I probably won't be tweeting for my tech account very much, so I'll be traveling. But you can find me at bman4789 or on my website that I haven't that I still haven't touched in forever at being, uh, geez, brianm.me. Yep. Nice, nice. And what's up for the next week? You said you'll be traveling. Where to? I am leaving tomorrow at noontime to Edinburgh for two nights. They go to London for three and then visiting a friend in Budapest for the weekend. That's right. Awesome. So yeah, I think it'll be fun. I'll be solo traveling in the UK. So hoping it goes all right. Yeah, totally. Pick up some, uh, if, if you're, if you're in London for long enough uh, that you see an eat restaurant, check okay. eat out. Eat is really cool. Um, they, all, they, have, the list. they have really good pies. Um, okay. If you're, if you're ever in Shoreditch, there's a, there's a, a place that sells falafel, which is like falafel in London. Yeah. But that's, it's really good too. It's kind of like Chipotle falafel. There's crazy amount of falafel here in, I guess, Copenhagen and yeah. Berlin. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, falafel is bay. Definitely. Where can we find you guys? Well, uh, I will still be on the Twitters at uh, Brandon underscore MN. Um, I'm also going to be, I, I, like Brian, am going to be working on an update to my website. I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I bought Brandon.MN uh, as a domain name. I finally I finally gave in, bought it, because parallelism with my Twitter name is apparently valuable to me. <laughs> and uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. I'm thinking I'm going to move my portfolio page over to that, and I'm going to try to make the portfolio page a little bit more uh, reasonable. Mm-hmm. I'm also kind of messing around with Redis a little bit, which is a, a cache. Yeah, right? It's, it's kind of like a, a key value store. Um, sort of viewed as a replacement or alternate a replacement to or alternative for uh, memcached. Yep. Um, yeah, I've, I've been messing around with that a little bit. I got a hosted instance um, and the node support for it seems to be pretty cool. So I'm going to try to kind of set up a weird CMS sort of thing incrementally. Mm-hmm. So um, start with the back end thing. And then, yeah, I know how hard those CMSs are. Right. And then oh. uh, at some, at some point I want to, hook it up to some sort of like a uh, Vue.js or possibly even like React if I really want to go down the React route again. Um, Vue.js, do it. Yeah. That's, see, that's what I'm thinking. The more I read about it, the more awesome it seems. So I might do that and remove the back, you know, remove the back end, perhaps not entirely, but um, like minimize the dependence on it as much as possible. Yeah. So just kind of using it as a way to try out some more stuff. Mm-hmm. How well, about you, Ryan? you can find me just about everywhere, but especially on the Twitter and Ryan Amar, and of course on the Google Plus, which is where I post something. I don't know what did I post on Google Plus lately. I post a uh, picture of the dog. ITunes. Yeah. Um. Uh. Yeah. And and as we mentioned earlier, we are on iTunes now, uh, so you can now find all of us on the iTunes. Woo! And um, yeah. Any anything else? Yeah. Rate and review us on iTunes if you're if you're listening and feel so obliged. Um, and, otherwise, uh, you can also always talk to us on Twitter. And be sure to check out the show at, uh, what's the URL, Ryan? Oh, the show's URL for this particular episode is thenexus.tv slash PK13. And of course, you can view all the episodes at thenexus.tv slash PK. One day I'll have a CMS where all of that makes sense. <laughs> nice. Yeah. See you guys next week. Have a good one. Yep. Yeah.